Early June is when a lot of our summer crops start to get going for us here in the south and things are just starting to get going. We are a little bit behind where we would normally be and that is for two reasons. One of those is because we've had literally no rainfall for nearly a month now. And the second thing is because we had quite an unusually cold spring, so some of the plants were slower to get going. But things are growing now, and so today we thought we'd give you a tour of our vegetable beds, our main growing areas, so that you can see how our crops look and what we're starting to harvest. So we'll come down to our broad bean beds to start with. And it was a little bit of a battle to get these broad beans off the ground um, this year because we have quite a few voles and rats and mice and goodness knows what else here. And normally I sow direct, but they were just eating all of the seed this year. So I, I ended up doing about three different sowings for these, these broad beans, but it is paying off now because we have got lots of beautiful pods just filling out and they're not quite ready to harvest. I've tried a couple and the beans are a bit small still, so they just need a few more days, but they are so delicious. There is such a huge difference between fresh broad beans from the pod compared to say frozen ones that you buy in the supermarket. And I will quite happily eat these beautiful broad beans raw as well. And they're just really, really lovely and fresh. So the broad beans are in the middle of this bed and then you can see we've got some ochre um, dotted between the frames as well and ochre is a tuber, a little tuber crop with quite a lemony flavour. It's, it's a really interesting crop. Um, we've done other videos about the ochre so if you'd like to see more on that then check those out. And then on the outside of the frames we've got our climbing beans that are just starting to come on. Um, we've got four different variety of crime, climbing beans on these frames. These first ones here are Greek Gigantes and they are really wanting to grow this year. They are coming on the best out of all of our beans. And then we've got um, Cherokee Trail of Tears on this frame. We've got Kazar, um, which is a white runner bean on these ones. And then on the end, we've got um, an Egyptian pea bean, which is really beautiful. And I'm still bringing some of those on from seed at the moment because the germination was a little bit patchy on those this year, but there's still time to put beans in if you haven't done that already. But all of the beans we grow on these frames are actually beans for drying because that is a really important crop for us to have for the winter and it's a great source of protein that you can grow for yourself as well. So we'll come up here and this bit I'm trying to decide. So this is one of my next big jobs. I need to get in and clear this half of the bed. So this is actually my elephant garlic bed and I've only got half of it sown with elephant garlic this year but our next planting we're going to expand and I'm going to sow the whole of this bed with elephant garlic. We absolutely love elephant garlic and yeah next year we're hoping to start selling some and the garlic is very nearly ready to harvest. Um, I plant the elephant garlic out around September October and then we harvest it around the end of June or beginning of July depending on how things are looking. So that is nearly ready to come out of the ground and that is one of my favourite crops to harvest. I get super excited about that. But yeah, this is my next project, clearing this bed, but I just can't decide whether to do it before I harvest the garlic or afterwards because all of this is um, carrots which ended up germinating really late after no rain at the end of last summer. So they didn't really mature in time to harvest, but they are just about to flower and so many of the beneficial insects love the carrot flowers that I'm kind of tempted to leave it in and let them flower for a bit. I will have to make sure I get it all cleared before it seeds though, because that would cause havoc with my garlic bed for next year. Um, yeah, so anyway, a bit of work there. 
this beautiful big bed here this bed was really overgrown this year it is mainly our jerusalem artichokes all along the back here and yeah it was a bit wild the front half last year but dan has been in and he's done an amazing job at clearing this one out we've got courgettes all along the front this is um, some horseradish that i don't actually even remember putting in but i know i dotted a load of horseradish around a few years ago I love using horseradish in some of my winter tonics like fire cider. We've got ochre, um, self-seeded chard. We've got strawberries which have just found their way up here from other, pla from other plants further down. And Dan has also planted um, a load of sweet potatoes in here to act as a ground cover to smother out a lot of the sorrel which um, basically was just taken over this bed so that's something we're trying this year is just to put a ground cover in um, to replace that and then we've also got mashua growing along the front here and mashua is another beautiful tuber crop that we call it one of our winter survival crops um, it's a yeah tuber from the Andes and one of the things I love about the mashua it's in the same family as the nasturtium you can probably recognize the leaf but you can eat these leaves as well and they've got a beautiful peppery flavour. Um, so yeah, the nasturtium will just trail down the bank um, and along with the sweet potatoes will hopefully cover up some of this black plastic that we just have to help us manage the areas. So yeah, this bed's had a, a good overhaul this year, which is great. And then on these frames here, um, we, we've got a couple of trombone courgettes which we grew for the first time in our polytunnels last year so we're trialing those outside as well to see how they go and then i've also got some market more cucumbers um, on this frame here which is a variety which tends to grow quite well outdoors and then just finding its way up here is one of our potato beans um, and that is a perennial crop that we kind of planted here a few years ago and completely forgot about but um, yeah Dan found those when he was tidying this bed and we had a really good harvest and uh, they're not something I'll probably cook with regularly but really really interesting to try on the odd occasion and I'm just spotting here I can't go along here without picking some of these strawberries there's just strawberries dotted around everywhere so you have to eat a strawberry as you wander around oh, and they're beautiful and sweet mm. okay so this is our main area that we call Dubai excuse me I've probably got strawberry all stuck in my teeth now so along this top bed here these are just some um, rainbow chards that are left from last year and I've just left them in for now because we've not got as much kale going at the moment as we often have and these leaves are still great for harvesting even though the plants are running to seed it doesn't really change the flavour um, it doesn't make them go bitter like some plants do so yeah I've just left them in for now but I will um, hopefully get around to taking them out before they drop their seed everywhere um, so up here I've mainly got leeks uh, this is one lot of leeks um, one variety of leeks I planted out I think this will be the elephant leeks I can't find my label but it's in there somewhere and then along the back here I've got a few um, perennial Welsh onions which I'll leave in and just snip the tops off of those they're just getting going and then this side is a different variety of leek over here but they will be in this bed till well for the best part of a year now they'll just sit there happily and a lot of these um, beds we are only watering literally once a week because that is all we have the capacity to do and the leeks and onions which I'll show you in a minute are actually really good for when you're in drought periods because they can survive with very little watering so yeah they've they've literally been watered in and they've probably only had two other waterings since then 
but something that I had to water a little bit more when it was getting going was our parsnips and I'm really happy with how they've come along here so this whole section is um, parsnips that we've grown from seed and then you can see behind these um, that I've left in here these tall plants which are just flowering they're parsnips which I, I always leave a few in and let them run to seed because I always save my own parsnip seed because they grow best with really really fresh seed um, so yeah there's a few other parsnip plants dotted around because um, you know the more plants you can have that gives better diversity for your seed so then heading this way this bed here I'll just hop down this side this bed here is our French garlic and again most of this was planted out in October and I just realized yesterday I hadn't spotted but all of this because it's hard neck garlic has actually sent out its scapes which I've been missing and these scapes are beautiful you can eat them fresh they're lovely stir fried or roasted or pickled I might actually pick these later on today and try fermenting some I haven't done that before but yeah so this is all a hard neck French garlic and there's a little patch here which I actually did a bit of a trial on I sewed it really late in March I got a label in there and that's the other one here this one no that's the parsnip label I can't give you the date but it was really late in March and I thought I'd see if it actually formed up so that's an interesting trial. There are a couple of elephant garlics in here, but yeah, mainly that's the French garlic. So down here is our first sowing of carrots. And these ones I sowed in the middle of March. And we've actually harvested just a couple of baby carrots from here so far. Um, they need a little bit more to size up, but they're getting going. And in between these carrots, I've actually got some chickpeas growing and I grew chickpeas in the polytunnel for the first time last year and then I read somewhere that they don't actually like really high temperatures so I thought I'd try some outdoors as well this year so we've got some in both places just to see how that goes and then we've got chamomile that I've put at the end of the bed this is a chamomile I'll be harvesting to dry for tea and these are just starting to flower. I'm also going to be adding some other flowers into this area as well. Um, I've got coming along some zinnias which are coming along from seed at the minute. So all of this row here, other than the parsnips for seed, is pretty much beetroots and salad. So this was my first sowing of beetroot. And what's quite interesting, you can see this patch in the middle here and on the end is growing a lot stronger than these two patches here. And I'm pretty sure that is because we get a lot of mole activity under these beds, which does cause havoc with the plants. And I think the mole has been under some of these sections, but not the others. So yeah, but hopefully they're settling, it will all be okay. And then we can just um, harvest the ones that are ready and leave the ones for a later, later date that need to grow on more. So, Lots of salad, beautiful red salad leaves, red oak leaf, Lola Rosa, we've got dill here, um, green salad bowl, um, romaine lettuce. This, oh gosh, actually I need to take this coriander out. This is about to seed everywhere. So yeah, that one needs to be finished. Red oak leaf lettuce, that is actually one of my favorites. And I found that to be one of the hardiest ones that we grew over winter this year, just gone. I just finished some uh, mizuna from in here, so I'll probably add my next sowing of uh, salads into that gap. And then here we have got two different types of beetroots through this patch here. We've got a golden beetroot and then a beautiful stripy pink beetroot, one of my favourites. Um, the beetroots are almost ready. The, the first sowing, I could start harvesting some um, baby beetroots from there. But again, I'm just holding back to give things a bit longer. If we had had more rain, then they would be all grown a lot better. 
So you get parsley down here, which is just starting to size up. We've been pulling off a few leaves from that already. Um, so yeah, that's the flat leaf parsley. And then over here, I've got the um, curly leaf or moss parsley with a, with a rogue flat leaf that's snuck in there. And then this was my second sown of um, salads, which is, it's actually ready to start harvesting these salads as well. And they're actually doing surprisingly well, considering how little I am watering them. Um, what I've been doing is often on a Sunday, I'll do a really big pick and open up the plants a bit. And then I just flood between the rows of the salad. and yeah that's that's been just about enough to to keep everything as it should be at the end of the rows i've just planted out some sunflowers as well i transplanted those the other day so throughout the season they grow up nice and big and we'll be able to look at their lovely big sunny heads this section is courgettes so as you can see some plants are doing a lot better than others again the courgettes have just been getting really one water a week And what's going to be interesting is seeing how these courgettes do in this bed compared to the ones at the top because if you saw our video back in the spring that we made when we um, rejuvenated all of this area ready for the growing season and or if you've been following what we do here for quite a long time you'll know that we normally have wood chip on top of our beds as well but we're trying it without this year um, or for certain parts of the year just to help with weed management and to see really how it goes in comparison to the wood chip and courgettes um, along with pumpkins and all of those kind of plants are something that really like moisture and feed so it's going to be interesting because the bed at the top which i showed you a minute ago has got the wood chip on whereas this one hasn't now these plants were planted out a good few weeks ahead of those ones up there but be interesting to see how they crop throughout the season so under here is kohlrabi and the kohlrabi is a little bit behind where i would like it to be and again a couple of reasons for that one of them being the lack of rain Oh, I'll just grab that one off there. And when I first planted the kohlrabi out, I made one of the classic mistakes with growing and spacing. And I thought, oh, there's lots of space in this bed. I will interplant some radishes whilst the kohlrabi are getting going. And what I didn't think through was that they're actually in the same family, so their nutritional needs are probably going to be quite similar. And I think the radishes kind of where they grow fast, they took a lot away from the kohlrabi. And then the other week I also took the covers off and um, because I was forgetting to harvest the, the radish with all the covers on. And then the pigeons have come in and had a good feast on all of the leaves. So yeah, so I've, I've cleared the radishes out other than a patch at the end here, which are nearly finished anyway. And yeah, now mostly I'm putting the covers back on. But they're starting to size up. Uh, we've had a couple of harvests, harvests from them. We're pulling the bigger ones off. So here is one of our strawberry beds. And we have been harvesting every day from these now for the last week um, yesterday between here and the food forest i harvested 1.6 kg of strawberries now that sounds like a lot but it's actually not as much as we were getting last year the, the fruits overall are a lot smaller um, than last year so they've had a good feed of wood chips but and they had lots of rain obviously over spring but maybe to do with the shortage of rain we've had um, for the last few weeks these two beds up here you can see they need some attention so all of these leeks have really just finished we have been harvesting these up until well really this week um, but now they're getting a bit 
bit too woody to, to use. So I've got to clear these beds out. As you can see, this is our sorrel issue that we have here. It just goes everywhere. And into these beds um, over the next few weeks, I'll be planting out um, turnips. We'll go into one of these and probably some greens, um, some rainbow chard and things like that into the other. Down um, our last row here is my onion bed. And then I've also got that intersown with a second sown of carrots. So these are multi-sown onions. Um, I didn't have great germination with the onions. I had to do quite a few sowings. Like you can see these red ones, actually there's only sort of one to two that came on through each of the plugs. But that's good that we should have some lovely big red onions coming out of there. They're starting to size up really nicely. And then these carrots here were just um, lots of old seed which I had left, which I just mixed together and I broadcast sowed them, which normally I sow them into rows. So that'd be interesting to see how they come out. This is a white onion here. Again, the multi-sown cells came on quite a lot better on these ones. They're starting to size up. So carrots, again, just a few extra onions. And then this end of the bed, I had some space left and I found a load of old onion and leek seed. So again, I literally just broadcasted this seed and a lot of it has germinated, but it is now struggling with the lack of rain. And I don't know if you can see here, this sort of speed hump in the soil. This is where the mole has been right underneath this bed. And then in here again, I need to get and have a bit of a sort out because this is all self seeded mallow. I had a one mallow plant in here last year, which ran to seed, and now we have lots of mallow. We've got all of Dan's beautiful cannas along here. We call this our Canna Avenue, and they will be coming into flower later in the summer. And then on this frame here, right now we've got these beautiful purple snap peas. And the flowers are just such a lovely colour on these ones. And the peas are just beautiful. Now, they're not the best snap pea, as in they do get quite stringy quite quickly. So they are best harvesting when they're really young. Really not much bigger than that one. We did have a big harvest from here just last night. So, um, they're all quite small that are left on here at the moment. But yeah, I just love them for their colour and for their beautiful flowers. So we'll go down to another bed that we've got um, down here and I'll show you what's going on in some of our other areas. Our food forest is absolutely desperate for a good dose of rain as well. I don't know how much longer all the strawberries will keep going if we don't get some rain, but hopefully we have got some coming over this weekend. So fingers crossed, everybody doing the rain dance. Okay, so down on our green, we call this the village green area. We have got this bed here where we normally grow three sisters. And we are doing a three sisters variation this year because we're not growing our purple flower corn this year, which we normally have on this bed. And that's just purely because we've still got a load in stock and we haven't had chance to process it yet. So instead, I am growing sunflowers, which I will use to grow beans up. And then we've got lots of winter squash delicata in this bed here. The sunflowers are settling in really nicely. They are putting on some really good size and hopefully they are gonna give us an absolutely beautiful display later on in the year. And then the other thing which is really exciting about this bed, which I've done for the first time, is so peas, as you can see, all along the front here. And this batch here, 
is snap peas and they are just starting to form up there's one so yeah these will no doubt just probably get eaten as we wander past mostly and then this batch here should all be podding peas and I say they should be podding peas because I sowed all of the same variety but out of two different seed packets an older seed packet which is the batch over there and they are fattening up into peas that I can see are for podding but I just noticed yesterday some of these peas here they don't look like podding peas to me they look like a snap pea so I've just been hanging on to see if they suddenly bulk out but yeah same variety of pea two different packets not sure what we've actually got there so time will tell but there are definitely some over here you can see the difference how that one's all fattened up that is what they should all be looking like rather than flat like this so we might have extra sugar snap peas by the looks this year so we're going to go up and have a look at some of our beds that we've got up on a newer piece of land we call this the new land and we'll show you what's happening up here okay so up on our new land um, Dan has actually just put in a, another row of fruit trees all along here which we're really excited about because um, a lot of these trees are ones that he's been grafting onto some of them we actually bought as um, rootstock and he's been grafting different varieties some of our favorite varieties of fruit trees onto them and yeah I think they've all been quite successful we've had these growing on in pots um, until we were ready to plant them out so yeah this is going to be a beautiful little um, strip crop that we're going to do along here so they're going to be interplanted with um, things like black currants and gooseberries as well over time when we get this area generated a little bit more and then as we come up here this is one of our three sisters beds so in here this year we are growing um, sweet corn and we have got a big assortment of winter squash and pumpkins in here and then I will be planting, I haven't planted the beans out yet because we're waiting for the corns to get a little bit bigger and I've still got some beans coming on from seed. So yeah this is a sweet corn called super sweet and then there's about five different varieties of um, winter squash in here there's crown prince there's spaghetti squash there's ute um yu chicky curry i'm sure there's another one which i'm forgetting oh jumbo pink banana jumbo pink banana all of our favorites and i actually grew a lot of winter squash this year i grew extra because we have all of these areas which we're keeping black plastic on until we are in a position to regenerate them um, as we plan so the black plastic is just down for management and i decided it would be a great use of space to just pull back where we've got the gaps i've put mounds of compost in here and then i've sown all of our extra winter squash so they can just trail all over this black plastic and hopefully make it look a bit more natural and fresh and lush and then give us extra crops to sell or to share with our friends and family there's Murph just walking in front of the camera there don't you come and stand on my pumpkins will you come on you guys come on then and then the last of our main growing beds have to excuse it's a little bit little bit of a work in progress up here still is all of our beautiful potato beds and a lot of these are actually starting to flower now we've got four or five different varieties of potato up here mostly they are the sarpo range we find we get on really well with those 
Sapo Mira will just keep growing and growing and growing and give you beautiful, massive potatoes if you want them for jacket potatoes or for chips. We've got Blue Danube, which gives this lovely, lovely flower here. And that is quite a fluffy potato. Great for roasting and for chipping. And then we've also got um, pink fur apple up here, which is one of our favorite heritage varieties of potato. They're just this lovely, knobbly, really dense, waxy potato. I love them for curries and soups and roasting everything. Yeah, one of my favorites. And then just dotted around in this area, we've got courgettes and taro and banana plants just to hopefully make it look lovely and lush and tropical by the end of the summer um, yeah which is exactly how Dan likes things to be anyway I hope you've enjoyed the tour today I hope it's given you some ideas of things that you can be growing for yourselves if you've enjoyed it please click the thumbs up button don't forget to subscribe to our channel and we will catch you here again soon peace and plants Thank you.